Good day viewers. Today we are going to look at finite versus non-finite verbs. All right. So now finite verb. What is a finite verb? From the name finite, it means limitation. All right. Something that is tied, something that shows uh, a kind of limitation. All right. It limits. It's limited to a particular period of time or space or something of that nature. Whereas non-finite verb it talks about non-limitation, all right? Something that is not tied to a particular time frame, all right? So now we're going to see what is the de definition of a finite verb, what is the definition of non-finite verb, all right? How does a finite verb works and how does a non-finite verb works? So let's move on. Introduction. Let's define finite verb and non-finite verbs, all right? So Finite verb, as the name implies, you see, is a verb that shows tense, person, number, according to the subject of the sentence, which indicates that it shows the time frame of the verb, whether it's a present verb, a past tense, or a future tense, all right? It also shows a number, which means it agrees with the number of the subject. If that person is a first person, or second person or third person, whether singular or plural. The verb must agree in number, in person, all right? And also in person, uh, whether the person is a male or a female. So now, also the finite verb, it carries, it takes the main action of the verb in a sentence and it what? It can stand alone as the main verb. Whereas non-finite verb do not show what tense. It do not. Sh it does not show what person. It also does not show number. It doesn't show tense, person, or number, which indicates what it's infinitive. There's no limitation. It's not limited to these things. All right. However, the non-finite verb is not limited to or by the subject, which means it is not tied with the subject. Also, non-finite verb cannot function what? As the main verb. It cannot function as the main verb. Uh, non-finite verbs include what? Infinitives, gerunds, and participles. Let's see them in the examples. Now, finite verbs. What is included? What are the characteristics of a finite verb? Number one, tense and agreement. Tense and agreement. Finite verbs change their what form to show tense. That is to show whether a verb is a present tense or past tense or a future tense verb. And also that verb must agree with the subject in terms of what? Person and number. Primary action. Finite verbs carry the primary action, the main action of the verb or state of being in a sentence and can stand alone as the main verb. Subject dependence. Finite verbs are directly tied to the subject, just like I said in the introductory aspect. It is tied directly with the subject and their form changes based on the subject's characteristics. Let's have some examples. Now, she sings beautifully. She sings beautifully. Now, this particular sings, the verb sings, all right, is finite verb. It shows present tense. All right, it shows present tense that she is singing. All right, she sings beautifully. It shows present tense or habitual uh, thing. All right, habitual verb. And also, it agrees with the word, the subject, she. All right, she, because she is a singular in number. All right, sings. Since we have an S here, it agrees with the verb, uh, with the noun, also subject, she. They will eat dinner later. They will eat dinner later. Now you see, all right, will eat. 
it signifies what future tense is also finite because it shows indication of time it indicates the time frame all right future tense and also agrees with the verb with the subject that is the noun they all right the pronoun they so you see they will eat that's why we have the base form of the verb eat since the subject is what plural form all right good now he wrote a novel last year he wrote a novel last year wrote is a finite verb which indicates what past tense something that has happened in the past and also wrote agrees with the subject he which is also a pronoun right good now the last example on this finite verbs is what she has finished her homework she has finished her homework all right has finished also is the is a finite verb which shows perfect present tense all right present perfect tense something that has just finished already all right it's all right pa present perfect tense and agrees with the subject she which is also a pronoun all right now let's move on to non-finite verbs and see what they unfold non-finite verbs now what are the characteristics of a non-finite verb or non-finite verbs the first one is what no tense or verb agreement all right no tense or agreement so non-finite verbs do not change their form to indicate tense or agree with the subject in terms of person or number all right they do not change their form we'll find out the second thing is complementary role they function as modifiers they do not serve the purpose of carrying the action themselves the main action of the verb no they serve as modifiers for those of you who haven't watched about modifiers uh adverbials as modifiers you can go to our previous videos on adverbials as modifiers and watch there you understand the meaning of modifiers all right complements or substitutes in a sentence adding what additional information without being constrained by subject verb agreement all right also here subject verb agreement i have made a video on it concerning concord so if you haven't watched the video you can go back to concord in our previous videos and watch it there you will understand more about subject verb agreement all right now independent from subject independent from subject non-finite verbs are more flexible all right they and uh they are more flexible and they can be used in various sentence structure uh, structures or constructions without being directly linked to the subject right now let's move on to the examples so as to grasp the meaning of all that we've mentioned here now examples of non-finite verbs see to swim is his favorite activity to swim is his favorite activity here it's not favorite it's favorite 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 all right so now what happens to swim is infinitive it doesn't show a time frame all right it doesn't show a time frame that's why they are called non-finite they are not limited to a particular time frame they do not show future present or past to swim is infinitive no such indication of time frame all right so to swim here it acts as what the subject also of the sentence so it's infinitive the second one is what running every day keeps her fit running every day keeps her fit so running here it serves as what gerund gerund we've also made a video on gerund all right verbs serving as nouns if you haven't watched the video also you can go to our previous videos and watch the what video on gerunds verbs serving as nouns or 
performing the functions of a noun. So also here, running is also a verb here, but performing or taking the action of a noun. With that is why it's called gerund. It acts as, as a subject of the sentence running. All right. So running every day keeps her fit. So you see no time frame, no limitation to a particular time frame. He likes reading novels. He likes reading novels. Now, reading also here is what? A gerund. It acts as the object of the verb likes. All right. This is the verb likes. Reading also non-infinitive. It does not show what time frame. Infinitive. All right. And also a gerund here. One of the characteristics of the non finite verbs serving as infinitive no specification to a time frame also performing the role of a gerund the book written by a famous author is captivating the book written by a famous author is captivating now what is the role of this verb written it it performs the function of a word complement all right complement participle right it modifies the what? It modifies the noun what? Book. All right. The book written by a famous author is captivating. All right. Past participle form acting as modifier for the noun book. All right. Telling you more about the noun book. So this is the uh, example or some of the these are the some of the examples of are uh, non-finite verbs now what differentiates finite from non-finite verbs um in our in the earlier uh, slides all right we made mention of the difference or the functions or characteristics individually now we are going to have them whereas this is this and this is that so Finite verbs change according to tense. We've said that already. Past, present, future. And also agree with the word subject. Whereas non-finite verbs remain constant regardless of the subject or time. See? This changes according to time frame. This does not. Function in a sentence. Finite verb can stand alone as the main verb and carry the primary action. All right. We've seen that already. The main verbs are standing as uh, finite verbs. They indicate time frame and also carry the primary function of the verb. Whereas non-finite verbs act as what? Complements or modifiers in a sentence. Complements or modifiers in a sentence. The third difference is what? Subject dependency. Subject dependency. That means uh, whether a, a verb is dependent or is tied to the subject, which happens to be the noun or not. So in this instance, finite verbs are closely tied to the subject. All right. The subject. They are tied to the subject, whereas non-finite verbs are more versatile and not constrained by the subject. They can serve as a subject themselves. Modifiers, complements, all right? They are versatile, they move along. So they are not tied to the subject. Whereas uh, the verbs, all right, finite verbs, once you have the subject, all right, you are going to have the finite verb, which carries the function of the main verb itself. Now, Let's have some interactive quiz. Which of the following sentences contains a finite verb? To bake cookies is fun. To bake cookies is fun. She bakes cookies every weekend. She bakes cookies every weekend. Baking cookies is delicious. Sorry, baking cookies, a delicious Aroma fills the kitchen. Baking cookies, a delicious aroma, fills.
fills the kitchen. Now, from these three examples, which of the examples carries what? Finite verbs. Sorry, finite verb. Finite verb from this example one, two, three. Where can you find a finite verb? Question number two. Which sentence showcases a non-finite verb? Which of the sentence, following sentences, shows a non-finite verb? One. He will read the book tonight. He will read the book tonight. Reading books is his favorite pastime. Reading books is his favorite pastime. She writes stories in her free time. She writes stories in her free time. Now, also, from these three examples, which of the examples given carries a non-finite verb? Here, the first one, we want to see you bringing out the example that carries a finite verb whereas on number two here bring out the example that has a non-finite verb so thank you very much see you in our next video goodbye